Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to securely access your NAS from anywhere in the world by configuring OpenVPN server on your Synology NAS. This was the most requested video from my Synology NAS setup and configuration guide, so if you haven't seen that, I'm going to leave a link in the description and I'll leave a pop-up up top for you to check it out. So before we get started, I want to mention that as always, we have full written instructions in the description for this entire process. So to get started, we have to go to the Package Center on our NAS, and we have to install the VPN Server application. So after you install it and you open it, you'll see that Synology has three different VPN Server types. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to set up OpenVPN. So navigate to the OpenVPN section and then enable the OpenVPN Server. At this point, you can change the dynamic IP address if you'd like, but you don't have to. As long as you're using something that's not in use, you shouldn't have any problems. Inside of here, the only other change that we have to make is that we have to allow clients to access server's LAN. This is so that you can access your local network when you connect through your VPN. After you make those changes, you can apply those settings, and then you have to go over to the privilege section, and you need to make sure that the user account that you want to connect to your VPN with has permission for OpenVPN. So at this point, the VPN server configuration is actually done, and we're going to move over to the firewall at this point. So if you don't have your firewall set up, check out my initial setup video, and it'll guide you through the whole process. But we need to go in, and we need to make sure that we have a firewall rule set up for UDP port 1194. That is what OpenVPN uses. After you do that, you've configured your NAS to accept connections on UDP port 1194. We now need to configure our router by port forwarding that same UDP port 1194 to our Synology NAS. So these instructions are going to be different for everybody because everybody has a different brand router. So the best thing to do is actually Google the brand router that you have and port forwarding. You should find a ton of tutorials that show you exactly how to do that. But we need to port forward UDP port 1194 to our Synology NAS's IP address. So if you don't have a static IP address set up for your Synology NAS, you have to set that up first. I also have those instructions in my initial setup guide. As soon as you complete the port forwarding steps, you're actually configured fully to actually accept connections on your Synology NAS for your VPN server. And now you have to configure your OpenVPN configuration file so that you can connect to that VPN. One thing that I want to note is that Synology gives you the option to actually configure your external router through the Synology NAS itself using UPnP. Uh, which is universal plug and play. The problem with it is that it's somewhat of a security concern um, and it's highly debated on if it is or if it isn't. So for that reason, I'm not gonna go through it in this tutorial, but I have a link in the written instructions that I'll show you the Synology guide if you want. So before we get started with these steps, I wanna mention that you have to have a DDNS host name configured for this step. The reason for that is because most people have dynamic external IP addresses. So in our configuration file, we need to ensure that we're always connecting to our external IP address for our Synology NAS. So I'm not going to go through the DDNS configuration process here, but in the written instructions, I have two tutorials there. The first is how you can set up a free Synology.me hostname, and the second is if you don't want to use that, you can use DuckDNS to do the same thing. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you have DDNS configured. The absolute only situation where you do not need a DDNS hostname configured is if you have a static external IP address. So to edit that configuration file, we're gonna go back to our VPN server application. We're gonna to go to OpenVPN and then we're gonna export that configuration. Now that's gonna export a zip file and we're only gonna be actually editing the openvpn.conf file, that's the configuration file. So in this file, there are only four changes that we're gonna make. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the section that says your server IP and we're gonna make that our DDNS host name. The second thing that we're gonna look at is the redirect gateway line and before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly show you exactly what this does. So when you configure a VPN, there are two different types of VPNs. There's a split tunnel VPN and a full tunnel VPN. Both types allow you to access your home network and your local resources. 
The difference is that when you're actually connecting to an external network, so if you're trying to get to Google, a split tunnel VPN will go directly from your current network to Google. A full tunnel VPN will go through your home network. So if you're interested in securing your connection because you're on a public Wi-Fi or an unknown network, you must configure the full tunnel VPN. This pushes all of your traffic through your home network. A split tunnel VPN will actually go around your home network and it will go directly to that external network and you won't have any of those benefits. Before we configure this, what I do is I actually have two separate config files. I have one for split tunnel and I have one for full tunnel and I have both of them on every device where I use my VPN. And the reason for that is because there are situations where I will be on an unknown network and I want to actually connect through my home network, so I'll use the full tunnel. But there are also situations where I'm on a trusted network and I don't care about my external traffic. I only want to get to my local resources on my home network. So for those scenarios, I'll use my split tunnel VPN. So that was a long explanation for what is literally one line in this config file. But if you want a full tunnel VPN setup, you have to remove the pound sign in the redirect gateway def1 line. That's just the comment symbol, and by removing that, you're enabling the full tunnel VPN. If you keep that commented out, you will have a split tunnel VPN. The next thing we're gonna look at is the DHCP option. Now, when you connect through your VPN, by default, OpenVPN falls back to Google's DNS servers if you do not specify a local DNS server. If you do have a local DNS server, you can put the IP address of that local DNS server in this line. The important thing to note with this is that if you do not have a local DNS server, when you try to connect through your VPN from an external network, you will not be able to navigate to your local resources by host name. So for example, if your NAS has the host name of NAS, you won't be able to access it by using that host name NAS you'll have to use the IP address because you don't have a local DNS server configured. The final thing that we're gonna add is a line at the bottom that says client cert not required. And we're adding that because if you don't, you will receive an error when you try and connect through your VPN because it's looking for a certificate that doesn't exist since we're only using this configuration file. But adding this line will stop that error from occurring. So at this point, our entire OpenVPN server is fully configured, and now we just have to test it. So to test it, you have to download the OpenVPN client on whatever device you're using, whether it's your cell phone or PC, whatever it is. But the important thing to note is that you must be connected to an outside network. You cannot test this from your internal network where your VPN is currently hosted. So if you're using a cell phone, that's a great way to test it. Just make sure you're using your cell phone's network. So you're gonna create a new profile on whatever device you're testing this with, and then you're gonna to have to add that OpenVPN configuration file that we just created. At this stage, you're just gonna log in with your username and the password that we set up initially in the privileges section, and then you should be able to connect. So on that device, if you tried to connect to DSM, you should be able to now because you're actually connected to your local network. So I'm just quickly showing here the differences between the split tunnel VPN and the full tunnel VPN, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever you configured, as long as you can connect in, you'll be able to access your local resources. So if you made it this far, I wanna quickly ask if you like the format of these videos. So I try to condense them and I just show the tutorials without much of an explanation of what it is that we're doing and how it works. But if you guys are looking for more of an explanation before we get into the tutorial, just leave it in the comments so I know because I'm going based on kind of the things that I like to see in a tutorial. And if that's not the case for the audience that I wanna you know, cater everything to you guys. So thanks a lot for watching. I've been getting a ton of great feedback and I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks everyone.